Alright gang, welcome back. So while we're technically done with conjugated systems and everything specific to that realm of organic chemistry, we're going to kind of take a little detour that's still involving conjugation. And that right here is aromaticity. So before we get into stuff like doing reactions with benzene and doing other stuff, I want to first talk about what aromaticity is and kind of the consequence of being aromatic. Okay, so I'm sure you've seen this structure once or twice or a million times since you started taking OCHEM, and I'm sure you've heard the name benzene at least once. Okay, benzene is what we would call an aromatic structure. And here's what it means to be aromatic. Basically, there are three conditions. You need to be a ring, uh, and not just a ring, you need to be conjugated. So if we look at benzene as an example for that, right, we have obviously a six-membered ring, and if we look at each carbon, right, we have an sp2 hybridization, sp2 hybridization, sp2 hybridization, sp2, sp2, and sp2. And like we just talked about with conjugation, that means we have a system of p orbitals which allows for the delocalization of electrons, right? So that means we have a p orbital here, p orbital there, p orbital here, p orbital there, p orbital there, p orbital there. So that means that these electrons aren't really just in one place. They are not static. They're almost kind of smeared along the whole part of the ring, right? Like this. And I'm sure you've probably seen benzene drawn like this with no double bonds but just a circle. And that means that these electrons are kind of just circling all the time. They're delocalized, right? Okay. So you have to be a ring and you have to be conjugated. The next rule is kind of a consequence of the first rule, is that you have to be flat. And remember, if you're sp2 hybridized, that means you are flat, right? You're trigonal planar, that is your geometry. So two is kind of a consequence of one. You kind of really never have to check for two. And three, you have to abide by what is called Huckel's rule. And basically, that's also referred to as the 4n plus 2 rule. So what that means is, all of the electrons that you kind of include in the system you're trying to name as aromatic or label as aromatic, they have to kind of, they have to satisfy this 4n plus 2 equation where n is an integer like 1, 2, 3, whatever, or possibly even 0. And here's what I mean. I'll redraw benzene really quick. Okay, so let's see what like, we wanted to prove to someone that benzene is an aromatic structure. Okay, so benzene is a ring, and we just kind of sh showed earlier that it is conjugated, right? It is sp2 hybridized in every carbon involved in the ring in a continuous fashion. We know it's flat because everyone's sp2, and let's see if we can apply the 4n plus 2, if we can apply Huckel's rule. So we have, you have to count your total amount of pi electrons, your pi system electrons. So we have 1, 2, three bonds, that means we have six pi electrons, right? So does that satisfy 4n plus 2? Well, if we make n equals 1, right, we would have 6 equals 4 plus 2, and that checks out. So it, benzene passes Huckel's rule, and we are, in fact, aromatic. So that's a good thing, right? Awesome. Okay. Now, I want to give you a few more examples and then kind of show you why being aromatic is such an interesting thing we are going to study. Okay, so let me kind of give you this example right here. Right, a cyclopropane ring, right, and it looks like not everybody's conjugated, right? We don't see all those alternating double bonds. However, if we think back to a few videos ago, we remember that if you are positively charged, right, a cation, you're sp2 hybridized. So if we're going to look at the first rule, right, we do in fact have a ring, and we are conjugated, right, because this carbon's sp2 hybridized, this carbon's sp2 hybridized, and so is this guy, right? So we are conjugated, and we are in a ring. As a result, we are flat. Now let's see if we abide by the 4n plus 2 rule. And sure enough, let's see, we have two electrons here, and that's it. We have two pi electrons in this system. Can we make this 4n plus 2 equation work? Well, if we make n equal to 0, then yeah, right? Because if this goes to 0, we just have 2 equals 2. 
So this cyclopropane ring with a double bond and a carbocation absolutely is aromatic. Okay, so let me just show you one more example of aromaticity. I'll show you kind of a couple of different scenarios when you're not aromatic, and then we'll talk about benzene. So let's look at this structure right here, and I think you guys may have seen this on one of the conjugation worksheets. Okay, this is a solvent called THF. We'll see it used in the future. Okay, so again, we're in a ring, which is good. Now, we need to see if we're conjugated. And here's kind of, again, we're going to harp back to one of those conjugation videos. So we can see, yes, this carbon is sp2, this carbon is sp2, so is he, so is he. Is this oxygen, though? Well, he is sp3, but remember, conjugation and also aromaticity is such a stabilizing effect. What oxygen will do is he will orient one of these lone pairs to be parallel to the rest of these p orbitals so that we can include it in the pi electron system, right? Because we know that the ring is flat. Three, four, and plus two. Okay, so if we need one of these electron pairs, oxygen will throw it in a, an orbital parallel to the rest of the p orbitals. So in this case, we need this electron pair to be parallel to complete the conjugated system, right? So oxygen is going to do that because it's such a stabilizing effect. Na naturally, he's going to adopt that type of conformation. Okay, so now we know we're conjugated because oxygen will force his electrons to be parallel to the other p orbitals. Let's see if the 4n plus 2 rule checks out. 4n plus 2. So we have two electrons from this double bond, two electrons from here, that's four. And then we have six from this oxygen. So again, we saw this earlier. If we make n equal to one, four plus two does in fact equal six. So THF is absolutely aromatic. Okay, however, what happens when we don't have the 4n plus 2? What if, we, what if we just satisfy 4n? Well, that's a little bit of a problem. Let's look at this four-membered ring right here. Right, this is a cyclobutane derivative. So let's go through our rules. Are we conjugated and are we a ring? Yes, we are. We are a ring and we are conjugated, which means we are indeed flat. However, do we satisfy the 4n plus 2 rule? And no, because we have four pi electrons, and that doesn't satisfy 4n plus 2. There's no combination of n being an integer that satisfies it. However, what we do do is satisfy the 4n rule. And if that's the case, if you satisfy 1, 2, the conditions there, and the 4n rule, you are said to be anti-aromatic. And believe it or not, if we're going to rank being aromatic, non-aromatic, and anti-aromatic on an energy diagram, being aromatic, you are the lowest energy. That's a very stabilizing effect. Being non-aromatic, you're just kind of chilling, you know, in any given situation, you're just, you're just not as stable as being aromatic. But in actuality, if you're anti-aromatic, you are actually higher energy. You are more unstable than if you just weren't aromatic at all. Okay, so let me erase some of this and then I'll talk about really what it means to be aromatic and how that kind of plays into reactions and where we're headed. Okay, so one consequence of being aromatic, like I just showed you on the energy diagram, is that you have lower energy, right? Because there's a lot of resonance that helps delocalize the charge in the ring and we know that's extremely stabilizing. Well, as a result, we know nature tends to stability, right? It likes to be stable. Said another way, nature likes to stay that way. Not, nature doesn't like to do stuff to make it higher energy. So let me kind of just show you two reactions, and this will kind of illustrate where we're headed in the next video. So if I was to do some type of reaction, let's just say throw in HCl, trying to do a Markovnikov addition of chlorine to this benzene ring, you'd think we'd have this product, right? Let's just say I'm going to pick this double bond to protonate and have chlorine attack. We expect this product. However, I'm going to tell you that this is bad, 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 and does not occur at all. If you put HCl and benzene together, 
no magic, nothing's happening. However, if you actually use these different types of reagents, Cl2, and then a catalyst called aluminum trichloride, I would tell you, you can expect to have this type of product. And here's the difference. We're going to look in this reaction at the, in the next episode, and we're going to use it very thoroughly going forward. However, can you see how this reaction must go through a mechanistic route that maintains or restores the benzene ring's aromaticity? Uh, unfortunately, up here, right, we actually ruin the aromaticity of the ring. This actually makes the product less stable than the reactant, right? On an energy diagram, it would kind of look like this. I'll draw two of them. We're kind of starting down here. Super stable, super happy, but we're ending up way up here, right? So we kind of got this situation going on. All right, reaction progress. And we know that that is a not great situation at all. And that's why the reaction doesn't even occur. However, in this bottom reaction where we kind of restore or maintain our aromaticity, all right, reaction progress, we know it occurs and it's an exothermic reaction so the energy diagram looks a little like this, right? We start out at the same position as we do up here, and we end up down here, or just at some position lower than where we started. The activation energy might be a little higher, but we achieve, we actually achieve this result and chlorinate our benzene ring. So just know that if we're going to do some things to benzene or any aromatic structure, we're going to have to use a pathway that maintains our aromaticity and keeps benzene happy versus one that does not and actually disrupts the aromaticity of the ring because aromaticity is a great thing, helps delocalize the electrons in a system, and we want to keep that. Okay, so there's actually a video kind of geared towards recognizing aromaticity. So you have to apply the three rules we talked about. And also, I think we talked somewhere, something about this. So get that worksheet and then we'll come back and we'll actually learn how to do some of these reactions, drawing the mechanism and completing the reaction. See you later.